on our list is VPNs to get ourselves ready for the certification exam. In this case, we have to cover topics like GRE, IPsec, GRE over IPsec. Now, we already had a discussion on a type of VPN, and that is VRFs. VRFs are a type of VPN. So uh, maybe next time I teach this, I'll move the VRFs into this VPN discussion instead of having it just before it, because intentionally it's type of setting up VPNs, virtual networks, virtual private networks on top of other types of networks that we already have that exist. So we're going to begin here by talking about GRE. So GRE, generic routing encapsulation, we got to be able to configure it and verify it on the certification exam. So before we do that, though, let's remind ourselves what a VPN is. So a VPN is about creating tunnels that virtually connect to non-directly connected points to each other. So for example, in this case, we have this router connected to the internet and this router connected to the internet, and we want to directly connect them to each other. Now, why aren't they directly connected together? Well, if you think about their physical connection here that's connected to the internet, that physical connection that's connected to the internet is then going to connect to a router here. And there's an IP addressing space between here and here. There's an IP addressing space between here and here. And then there are other routers in the internet that we have to go through. There's different networks that we have to go through in order to route to where we want to go. So we're not directly connected to each other. So how do we directly connect ourselves to each other? We create a VPN from here over to here, connect ourselves up. Now we have a virtual direct connection to each other, even though we're not directly connected to each other. And the same thing is true like with your remote access VPNs, right? You're directly connecting up the mobile workers software on their laptop to this router here. So that way they can directly connect to the network itself. Now VPNs come in many different flavors. We have layer two VPNs, we have layer three VPNs. You know, a lot of people get shocked when you say, well, VLANs are a type of VPN. They are. Right, what are we doing? We're transporting some other type of traffic over some other type of network, right? That is a VPN, right? There's Q and Q, there's frame relay, PVCs, ATM PVCs, VPLSs, VPWSs, right? All different types of layer two VPNs that are out there. With layer three, you got things like GRE, MPLS layer three VPNs. You've got IPsec, you got VRFs, right? Different types of VPNs. Now, what I always stress here for people to remember is that the word private it doesn't mean encapsulation. Uh, it doesn't mean encryption, right? It doesn't. Virtual private network is just simply saying we're setting up this other network on top of some other network in order to accomplish whatever objective we want. It's private because it's for us. It's not for anybody else. It's for us. But if we don't provide security to it, then it's obviously vulnerable. When you think about a VLAN, a VLAN is a type of VPN, but we're not necessarily providing encryption for our VLANs themselves. I mean, we can, right? Using something like MaxSec if we wanted to, but we're not, right? Right now in this discussion. So typically VLANs by default are unencrypted, right? But they're still a type of VPN. So keep that in mind that just because it is um, a VPN doesn't mean it's safe, it's secure, right? It's about just connecting two different points together. It's up to you to implement the security that you need on that VPN if you actually truly want to make it safe and secure this virtual private network that you've set up. So GRE can be used to create a point to point link over an IP network. GRE, generic routing encapsulation, creating a point to point link over an IP network. It can be an IPv4 network. It can be an IPv6 network. So the underlying network can be IPv4, can be IPv6. And then we can create a point to point link between two different entities using GRE, generic routing encapsulation. Generic routing encapsulation utilizes protocol number 47. So it is its own protocol and it gives us the ability to encapsulate our traffic. So that way there we can transport it from one end to the other end. Originally designed by Cisco, but eventually it became an RFC 2784. Problem with GRE tunnels is that there's no encryption. There's no protection. So very susceptible to man in the middle attacks, very susceptible to eavesdropping. But the greatest thing about GRE is that we get multi-protocol support. And so when we say multi-protocol support, what do we mean? We mean we support more than just IPv4 unicast traffic or IPv6 unicast traffic. So when you think about something like an IPsec site-to-site -site VPN, an IPsec site-to-site -site VPN transports IPv4 unicast or IPv6 unicast traffic. But something like a GRE tunnel gives us the ability to transport 
more than that. Something like our dynamic routing protocols. So what does that mean? It means that GRE Tunnel supports things like broadcasting. It supports multicasting and it supports unicast. So it gives us the flexibility to do a lot of things we can't do with a traditional IPsec tunnel, but it doesn't give us encryption. Now, don't let that hold you back. And the reason why I say don't let it hold you back is because of the fact that later on today, we're going to talk about how we combine GRE with IPsec to give us GRE over IPsec tunnels, where the GRE process is about multicast routing and all these different things. And an IPsec is about protecting the GRE tunnel while the traffic's being transmitted. All right, so just because I say no encryption right now, I say it doesn't provide any security, doesn't mean you don't want to use it. Because if we uh, combine it together with IPsec, then we get a really great solution on our hands. And if you've ever dabbled in or heard about something called the DM VPN, a dynamic multipoint VPN, well, that uses a combination of GRE and IPsec, GRE over IPsec, in order to accomplish that. And it's a really great solution. So that way there we can build, you know, uh, environments over top of the internet like hub and spoke environments over the top of the internet between branch and headquarters if we don't need an actual MPLS connection. So we can avoid the cost of MPLS if we can get away with doing what we want to do over the internet with the DMVPNs instead. Right. So keep this in mind for the certification exam that yes, GRE doesn't support encryption, but absolutely multi-protocol support. That's the power that it gives you when it's all said and done. So more on that later. So with GRE, we encapsulate our packet and we put new IP information in. Okay, so here's the deal, right? And I always bring this up because, you know, even though this is Encore, this is a professional level, sometimes we have new individuals joining that are new to networking. And because CCNA is not a prerequisite, they're like, well, I'm just going to jump into the professional level. I'm going to learn everything I can at the professional level. And, you know, I'm not going to take CCNA. That's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that, right? But Sometimes you get to the point where it's like you hear the word tunnel and you actually think we're building tunnels over the internet. I was there at one point in my career, really early on in my career. I'm like, we're creating tunnels over the internet? Wow, that's so cool. So here I am picturing like an actual tunnel, a tunnel. When I set all of this up, a tunnel is created from here to here over the internet. That's amazing. How does that happen? That's not what's happening. Right? When we talk about tunneling VPNs, we're talking about encapsulating. That's all we're talking about. Right? We're encapsulating what is we are sending. So that way there, it goes through a fake virtual tunnel. It doesn't exist. There's no tunnel. What it is, is about addressing that information we're trying to send. So that way there, it can go from this physical interface to this physical interface. Even though it's starting here on a user's PC and ending here on another user's PC or a server, whatever, right? It's about getting that traffic from here to here, encapsulating it, sending it over, decapsulating it, and then sending it to the end user. That's what a tunnel does. That's all it is. So we're still going along the physical path through all the routers and everything else, but we are encapsulating it in a way so it can be transported over top of the internet, in this case, the IP network. So how do we do that? Well, here's your original packet. This would be the original packet, let's say that's starting here. So in this original packet, there'd be what? There'd be a source address and there'd be a destination IP address. All right, source here, destination here. You got your TCP, UDP information. So in this case, let's take TCP. Then you got your data. Whatever it is that we're trying to transport. Now, when that gets routed through my environment, and then it reaches this edge router. This edge router does a routing table lookup and it sees that the destination IP address is over here. And the routing table shows that it has to go across the GRE tunnel, okay? Meaning it simply has to encapsulate it and send it out this physical interface. Encapsulate it with GRE and send it out that physical interface. So now what we're doing is we're adding on more information. That's what we're doing here. We're adding on now a GRE information and we're adding on a new IP header. So what is the new IP header? The new IP header is going to be the source IP of this physical interface. And then the destination IP over here of that physical interface. 
All right, so you see what's going on here? We are encapsulating the packet with a new header, a GRE header, and the GRE header says we're transporting it from here over to here, the physical interfaces. So the source IP is 203.01.13.90, the destination IP 198.51.100.46. So we encapsulate here, we decapsulate there, and that is our, I'm all foggy. I got off the screen. Come on, focus. There you go. We encapsulate here, we decapsulate there. That is our tunnel. We're encapsulating here, decapsulating there. That is our tunnel. And because this is GRE, the data and this information could be anything. It could be an OSPF packet, could be an EIGRP packet, could be multicast traffic, broadcast traffic, unicast traffic from a user to another user. But again, remember, there's no encryption built into this as a result of that. What does that mean? It means that this is all in plain text. Well, more on how we could protect this later. Now, something we need to take into consideration is what? What do we need to take into consideration? Okay. The MTU, right? So the MTU of a packet by default is going to be max 1500. So if a user is sending 1500 byte packets, that need to be sent over the GRE tunnel, that is now a problem. Why? Because when you add on the GRE header, you are making the packet bigger. And in this case with GRE, it's 24 bytes bigger. So that means the packet total size is 1524 now when it gets to the router. So it's 1500, gets to the router, the router adds this on, it's now 1524. That's not going to work. The router is going to have to do fragmentation with IPv4 if fragmentation is enabled, which it is by default, but many organizations shut it off now. So fragmentation, let's say, is enabled. Fine. Now fragmentation happens. That's going to slow down the router because it's now got to do, it's now got to use the CPU in order to fragment the packet before it sends it. So what is better in this case to make sure that the traffic that's being sent is 24 bytes lower.